Every day, fishermen from the far northeast of Scotland leave port for some of the cruelest seas in the world. Theirs is the most dangerous job in Britain. Now, in Trollerman, a new generation of fishermen are about to make their mark, braving violent storms and deadly conditions. All to put fish on our plates. from land, the smallest boat in Fraserburgh's prawn fleet has been trawling all night into a force 8 gale. Now the new dawn has suddenly lost power. She's in danger of tangling with her own nets. I've lost only 300, 400 revs. 23-year-old Chaz Bruce, the youngest skipper in the fleet, has risked northerly gales to be the only prawn boat fishing this far into the North Sea. It's a gamble that may have taken him out of his death. Right now, I haven't got a clue. We're giving that throttle, and she's not, she's not pushing forward, so... We'll have to heave up and see if we can maybe circle around and see if there's anything, see, see what the problem is. The new dawn is barely responding to the helm. Wind speeds are rising to 45 miles an hour. She's got two tons of nets dragging 450 feet down on the seabed. She's at the mercy of the elements. To regain control, Chaz and his young crew have to haul the gear back on board as fast as possible. It takes 20 minutes to get the net safely back aboard. But the new dawn is still losing revs. As soon as the storm passes, the crew take the first opportunity to investigate the power loss. Okay. They use the film crew's underwater camera to check New Dawn's propeller. The rope is wrapped tightly between the propeller blades and the shaft. It's strangling the revs, but leaving just enough power to keep the boat running. Still dangerous, fit slips out of place for the weather comes away again tomorrow. And he's back at the farm, we could be left idle in the middle of the sea. Maybe we should, we should be getting it sorted out, but we'll have to fish away another couple of days yet. As long as it's now moved into back into the blades, just hope it stays there. Chaz is trusting to luck that the propeller won't seize up completely and leave him stranded out in the North Sea. But after a fortnight's poor fishing, his luck is in short supply. A few miles to the southeast, the prawn trawler Amity is approaching one of Jimmy Button's favourite fishing grounds. Well, today we're in an area called the Buttocks. How it's called that, I don't know, but uh, it's a kind of strange name for a fishing area. I'm just wondering if there's a particular bit in the north side of here that maybe just looks like a somebody's rear end on the seabed. A nice couple of plump chicks. But Jenny 
he's not been sitting on his backside over the past few days. He's now over halfway through his first trip back after two months ashore to fit the Amity with a new engine. He's finding it a hard slog. At least this hall is bulging with bronze. The amateur's next net is just as good. There are even a few large cod. That's a hole in the bronze for you. That'll keep the man smiling for a while. That's the kind of prawns we're after. These kind of lads. Want to see more of these and less of these. We're not wanting these lads. These are the boys we're after. You tell me there's no cod in the North Sea. That fella wasn't a born yesterday. He's about as big and fat as I am. I'm just slightly better looking. That is a beautiful fish. So far did he come from? That thing's about 10, 12 years old. The hauls mount up. A good start towards clawing back the 60,000 pounds that Jimmy's had to pay out for Amity's new engine. The skipper's on a roll. <laughs> On the new dawn, the rope is still wrapped around the propeller, but they're fishing through the night. Chaz is gambling that the prawns haven't gone to bed. I just hope it's not too much fish, because I'm not going to let it out of that so much fish, and I want the prawns. I bet you'll be glad to see anything just now. <laughs> Rather than a haul of prawns, the net is full of worthless fish. Something a bit, I think they're a bit too small the fish. We'll just have to throw them back, I think. The next catch is no better. Rubbish. It's been a terrible week for the fleet's youngest ship. It's not for the lack of trying anyway. He's run every risk to stay in the game. The Air Force wins crippled propeller and poor fishing, but his determination to find the bronze is even stronger. Wait to see my 20 miles. There's one more area I can think the drives. I'm running out of options now. I'm going to so east this thing. But with the rope still wrapped around the propeller and yet more bad weather forecast, Chaz's dogged pursuit of prawns can only last so long. Johnny, the cook, is nursing the engine through the morning watch and keeping an eye on the revs. It's jumping up again. Stop someone in the propeller like... Nothing seems to face Chaz, not even the latest weather forecast. I can't really see his bind out for this, like, poor forecast till Wednesday again. The skipper's decision, I can't, I can't see it, like... Oh, it's not, it's not a bit of a roll to get a, a big roll. And just coming forward and seeing the hogger getting filled, this is... This gets your veins pumping. Oh, Chaz, I think you're nothing will stop him, like... He'll be a lot there, he like. I think he's trying to keep up with the big boots. I think that's what he tries to do, like. 
knocks the sub out of the place all the time. Just like a new. It's a big way, but. I'm better off in Dumble, we'll never do anyone any harm, so. We're all young lads, and I'm sure they enjoy it as well. <laughs> Chaz is hoping that the enthusiasm of youth will last out until their luck changes. I feel a little more, but a little bit more optimistic for some reason. Will Chaz's optimism be enough to turn the new dawn's fortunes around? They haul again. It's been a terrible week's fishing for Chaz and the boys on the new dawn. They've steamed hundreds of miles all over the North Sea for a handful of prawns and hoppers full of unwanted fish. I feel as I've been beaten, but... Can't help, but I've tried, but I've done my best. I've been, I've tried a lot of areas of... Can't say it's for the long after I answer. the amity, Jim is having no problems finding prawns. He's got 30 years experience to give him an edge. I'm just looking over, over into the, to the south there and I see that a windy looking sky and there's a, an old saying, mackerel skies and mare's tails, tall ships go to shorter sails. So the sky is very, very mackerel looking with, with foot long streaks, mare's tails. And tall ships go to short ourselves, it's too windy for yachts. As the wind increases, the conditions deteriorate. A bit of poor weather is nothing for Jimmy and his first mate, Kevin. It's a uh, good 28, 30 knots, westerly wind. Just a small dip in the sea, nothing serious. <laughs> I'm running ashore for bad weather this week. Is it a big drop in the morning? Nice little more sun face. It's been steady progress for the Amity since she returned to sea with her new engine. The halls aren't spectacular, but slowly the hold is filling with prawns. A few more days toughing out the weather and their trip will be over. The new engine has been working perfectly. Until now. See there's a fire in the engine room! Fire in the engine room! Fire alarms get off! Fire down below. A mariner's worst nightmare. Fire alarm was tripped by a burst cooling pipe. Steam and boiling water are spraying all over the engine room. It's a good job. There's fire alarms and bridge alarms aboard boats nowadays. Because when Jimmy showed from the wheelhouse and I ran down to the engine room, there was a pipe busted. And if that got into the electrics and a fire started, you're in a serious trouble. I just started to shoot the other day. It was a fire alarm that off in the engine room. So I said Kevin Doon, thinking it was a malfunction. Kevin Doon, the engine room was full of steam. And it was sheared the bolts off of a... Looks like we sheared the bolts off the fresh water cooling off the, off the engine. Jimmy and his crew head off disaster through their quick actions. It's just another day on Britain's most dangerous job. 
Chaz has not been so lucky. The new dawn is limping back to port with a rope wrapped round her propeller and no prawns to pay her crew. Waste of time. Hell day wasted for nine. It's a bit of a disaster, really. But never mind, we'll get out tomorrow. We'll get them next week. But on the upside, I've got something to cheer me up. <laughs> I'm sure it will. For a while. <laughs> Chaz's dad, Alistair, is at the quayside. The rope incident is more serious than they had thought. It's caused vibrations in the prop shaft, and the new dawn has to come completely out of the water. And there's no, nothing else to do but going to slip and get it repaired. You think you've wasted time, but the, you better, prevention's better than cure. You better get it sorted before you do more damage. Okay? So we'll get back out there and... The prawns better watch themselves. <laughs> I'm going for double pay for last week's fuel as well. Amity has been at sea for eight days. Put on the pump up there, lads! After a slow start, the boxes of prawns are mounting up. Provisions may be running low, but there's no shortage of seafood. Finest scumbie. Not from the freezer. It doesn't get any better than that. So my phone is cooking. The better not go in. I don't know about it. When me and Johnny starts meeting in the middle, we know it's nearly time to go home. Fox is on the early fun. Well, boys, it does not come any better than that. Fresh out to sea. It's good, like, but... Could have done with some salad around the place, no? Try my best. Keep up, Bobby. As for the fish they are not eating, there are 300 boxes in Amity's hold, destined for markets all over Europe. I'll tell you one thing. Whoever's eating the Amity Lancaster team this week, they better enjoy them, because we've gone through some hassle to get them this week. For her nine-day trip, Amity will make close to £25,000 at market. Over half of this goes on fuel, burning costs and paying for the new engine. The rest is split between skipper and crew. I've got to say, first step back after a major reef hit, to, to be at the end of the trip, we're still fishing, everything's still working. We've got a, a fair, a fair catch. And that's, that's all you really want. Jimmy hasn't found it easy back at sea. He's had two months of creature comforts ashore. This is definitely a young man's uh, job, this. I suppose when you're younger, you're hungrier, you're more fire in you. I mean, there's, there's fishermen will go until they're 70, 75, but when will I go? <laughs> no, no idea. Still enjoying the fishing, so... The new dawn is also back in the hunt. <laughs> There's a new tech hand on board, 19-year-old Ryan Monson. But this isn't his first time at sea. Trollivan followed Ryan's first trip in 2006. Back then, Ryan lacked the stomach for fishing. And his negative attitude soon upset his skipper. The fish had his one job and you're naked to survive and if you're not. You can feed it yourself, son. If you really want to eat. And by the time he returned to port, Ryan appeared to have had enough of fishing. He started to try it. He tried everything. <laughs> Does it just seem to work for me? Uh. Chaz has given him a chance to redeem himself. And, uh, I didn't really enjoy it the first time, but then. I went back, I've actually started to enjoy it. I think it's maybe just since a younger crew and 
There's a lot more atmosphere and everybody just has a laugh and there's no shouting and screaming. And to have to go in and I actually quite like it. I still get seasick as well, just for a day. When we're going out the harbour, I feel a bit uh, squeamish, so I just go down my bed and lie down. And I usually feel a little bit after I get up. The new dawn's last trip was a washout. This time, Chaz has decided to play safe and follow the crowd in his hunt for the elusive of prawns. Uh, a lot of boys here at the moment. Probably about 20 or so boys, so I hope, I hope we're not all wrong. It's usually a good sight. It's a fast hole for, for everyone, so there's no chance for the on. But... Some of the other boats luck rub off on the new dawn. There's 20 stone of good prawns. Most prawns I've seen in three weeks. <laughs> Amazed. Oh, we'll, we'll try and get the rest of them in. It'll take the crew the next five hours to sort the catch. Ryan rises to the challenge. After a disastrous fortnight's fishing, the smallest boat in the fleet is starting to catch up. What a crew lack in experience they make up for in hard draft. 150 miles to the northwest, there's a boat that dwarfs the new dawn. She's fishing in the treacherous waters off the Shetland Islands. Genesis is a deep sea trawler and fishes far out in the North Atlantic, where rich pickings come at the cost of freezing conditions and huge swells. In these deadly waters, the man responsible for the survival of everyone on board is skipper Alan Watt. Hello. But sometimes if you get a bigger one, it will just take, take your whole body away, it'll just wash a whole man away. And then he, once he's washed away, is isn't a clue where he's at. Genesis is 28 meters long and fishes with two massive nets. She can trawl at depths of up to 4,000 feet. Alan is one of Scotland's most successful skippers. He specializes in targeting monkfish. Highly lucrative, but notoriously elusive. Ah, the funny, the funny beasts. Uh, they disappear and nowhere, nobody knows where to go. When they appear, nobody knows where they come from. After six hours trawling into the Atlantic, the crew of the Genesis prepare for their first haul. Okie dokie, ladies. Rise and shine. Okay, boys, wait a haul. It's a beautiful day. You know what? Okay, guys. Alan is hoping for a tongue of monkfish. But instead, he's got a bag of dogfish. This looks like a pile of rubbish. There's a lot of dogs, and that's not good. These are marketable fish. They're totally worthless. So we've got to pull all these out the quarry and before we shoot it away again. And then start all over again. It's a nightmare. Back in the North Sea, just where New Dawn's luck seems to have turned, it deserts her once again. The boat is fishing with two nets in tandem, but they can't retrieve one of them. 
It's caught up on the seabed. The strength of a big wheat, take a hole in it. It look, looks like on a way of losing it. Being stuck hard and fast leaves Chaz with a terrible dilemma. He must either cut away his 6,000 pound net or compromise the safety of his boat trying to rescue it. With one half of their fishing gear gone to Davy Jones' locker, the other half is still in the water. They managed to haul it aboard. It's a seals. But they discover this net is also shredded. The crew rushed to save hundreds of pounds worth of prawns from being scuppered. More prawns there, that's it. Start to hug it to me. Now they're kicking the balls. It's getting down to easier, I've been in the water. With his best gear abandoned on the seabed, Chaz uses his spare net to get fishing again as fast as possible. It's lonely in the wheelhouse when you're out of luck. Charlemagne never gives up. Will a new day bring new luck to the new dawn? Most nets are stuffed with large prawns. Hallelujah! Beautiful. I think I'm in love with them. It's a massive hole. Last. I think we need a bigger boat. That's a major. And to top it all. Brian has found his sea legs. You get a good haul, everybody starts to cheer up. Next time on Trollerman, hey Alan Watt lands a massive monkfish. He's a big lad. <laughs> Hold the thing up, boys. Oh, are you friends? Chaz trashes another net. Oh, for God's sake. And meet the man with the most dangerous fishing job of all. This is what's coming to mind.